Hey everyone, it's Zach. So today I got gas, radon gas. So that's what we're covering today is radon. I used to think uh, a long time ago that uh, radon is not really that important or uh, it's just an oversight. Like we have our normal inspection. Why do we need a radon inspection? Well, I recently took a class that kind of helped re-up the importance of what radon is and why you should probably add it to your tool belt or the information you share to your clients if they're getting a home inspection. So what is radon? Well, radon is, uh, sorry for the dad joke, but it is a natural gas that rises up out of the ground. So it's colorless, odorless, tasteless. You can't sense it. So that's the dangers with this radon is it's a radioactive material. And no matter what, every house has some level of radon. Talking with a home inspector who's done thousands of home inspections, they have said still to this date, they have not found a single house that had a zero rating on their radon tools. So every single house has some sort of radioactive material coming from the ground. Radon is also the second leading cause of lung cancer. It's that serious. There is about 21,000 deaths per year from radon exposure, which is absolutely crazy. Um, radon as well can have different levels of how serious it is in a home throughout the year, because sometimes in the drier months, some of, especially in Tennessee, the clay starts cracking. So more of it can come up into the home because a home really does uh, have the air from underneath kind of go up into the home, like a vacuum effect, as you can see through this diagram, that homes naturally suck up things from the ground. And even like a crawl space, for example, if your house is on a crawl space, 50% of the air in your home comes from that crawl space. But it doesn't just have to be a crawl space for radon exposure. It can be a slab home as well. So what are different things as well that we should know? Well, as I kind of mentioned already, radon is everywhere. Here are the most prevalent zones in dark red, and then you can see orange and then yellow. So it's all across the United States. And you can see here, especially Middle Tennessee, we are kind of a hotbed for radon. This is in the Nashville, Murfreesboro, Franklin area. It's kind of a hotbed. Uh, one in 15 homes will test for high levels of exposure. So what is a high level of exposure? Well, we're going to get kind of into the technical readings of radon, but when they test radon, they use these machines to test how many uh, radioactive material particulates are in the air at any given time. And so they measure that in a unit called the picocurie, kind of like liter, pound, centimeter, it's a picocurie. So anything over a reading of four or higher is deemed, hey, this is more dangerous and we should get this checked out. We should have this remedied and fixed. So that's kind of the different scales to know of a Pico Curie and anything over four is deemed a dangerous rating and we should really mitigate and fix that problem. Um, let's see, radon is from the decay of uranium and radium. Um, and then it forms that radioactive gas. Let's see. And how serious this can be as well is if you keep reading this down here, but a thousand square foot home with a four uh, on the radon scale has nearly two million atoms decaying in it every minute. So that's how much exposure can be happening in even a thousand square foot home if you're at that dangerous level of 4.0 or higher. Ra radon is also classified as a category A cancer causing carcinogen, same as smoking. And then why this matters to your client when they're getting their home inspection is because one in 30 people are radiation sensitive. So they could have a more adverse effect. And if they haven't checked for radon levels, that this could impact them as soon as they move in the home. Um, so what causes these elevated readings in homes? Which homes are more prevalent to different radiation levels? Well, like I said, it doesn't really matter if it's crawl space, slab, doesn't matter how old the house is. It doesn't matter the construction type. It's more about where the house is actually located. Each unique parcel, each unique property is unique in the fact that that land is like no other land on earth. That one specific location in the world, in the local city, in that neighborhood is different from every other home out there. And so what that means is because this radon is coming from the ground and every location is unique, it all has its own characteristics. Underneath the ground, things we can't see, there could be cracks in the clay underneath that we can't see. Uh, our house could be on a slab, but maybe the slab has a crack in it. 
Maybe the piping that comes through the house isn't sealed as well as it should be. So it's a gas. So gas, just like air, it, it can come through anything. So that's why it doesn't really matter what type of house you have. It's more about where the house is located. And even two homes on the same street, one could read very low, but the other could read very high. And that could matter because either there's different things going on beneath the ground, or maybe let's say both are on a slab, but this other one has a bunch of cracking and uh, air exposure. Well, that could have higher readings. So that is number one is the strength of the source. How effective is it in entering the home? It can be also in well water as well coming into the house. And then as well, the ventilation rate in the house determines this as well. So even just opening windows can naturally help decrease the radon levels in the home a little bit. However, we all know we can't live 365 days with windows open. So there's a lot that goes into it. And that's why it's important to have it checked by a professional. The average home, and now this is going to scare a couple of people. The average home has a 1.3 radon level, and that's the average across America. Now, what does that mean, a 1.3 level? How dangerous is that? Well, this, this kind of freaked me out, but a 1.3 average rating, you can see here a 0.5 radon level is like smoking one cigarette a day or receiving 25 x-rays a year. A 2.0 radon level is like smoking four cigarettes a day, 100 x-rays a year. That dangerous 4.0 level or higher is like smoking eight cigarettes a day or 200 x-rays a year. So that's where uh, the government and local cities and states have said, hey, eight cigarettes or more, dangerous. Under that, not as dangerous. But a 1.3 average rating means about two cigarettes a day from radon, radon exposure. So that's how serious they can, this can be. Uh, but I guess if you think about all the things in your home, uh, even just the paint on the walls or all the things that are around you that are made of plastic, all this stuff is kind of giving off different chemicals or exposing us to different things. Now, another thing I would like to go over with radon is the testing itself. So this can impact real estate agents is if your client wants to get a radon test, by law, these tests by professionals have to last at least 48 hours. So that can really impact your inspection deadline. Maybe it's day seven and, the, and that's the last day of your inspection period. You put seven days for the inspection and on day six or seven, you have somebody coming out to check radon. Well, you know, naturally you should get an inspection extension because the radon test, it requires 48 hours. And the reason for all that time is these fancy machines, they'll go ahead and put them in the house. They put them at the lowest livable level in the house. So they would put it more downstairs. Or if you have a finished basement, they'll put it down there. But it allows it to get a better understanding and a better reading of what the actual radon levels are. These machines can also detect if air pressure changes in the home. So if like homeowners know, hey, if I open windows that lowers my levels of radon, this machine can tell the air pressure has changed and that a window has been opened. So they can make sure they get a valid test going forward. But yes, 48 hours is the biggest thing. Um, now, if radon is detected, the great thing is a lot of this can be reduced and uh, almost eliminated with uh, the proper mitigation efforts. So what does it look like to actually start fixing radon issues. So what they do, if you've ever seen these in a home, is these passive ventilation pipes. Now this one actually has a fan. So normally without the fan, if it's just this pipe you've seen in homes, it's just, it goes all the way down below the ground. Let's see if there's a better picture. Kind of like this. It goes below the slab and allows that radon gas a place to naturally go up this tube and then it goes out and up over the ridge uh, vent. So this allows the gas a place to go. If you if there's a fan in here, that kind of helps accelerate and push up this radon gas faster and leave the home so it never enters it. That's that's one stage of fixing it. And uh, a quote today, a range, again, don't give somebody an exact quote, but just kind of so you're aware, is we heard today to install one of these pipes with a fan is typically around $1,500 to $1,800. Now, always get a quote. if you If your client needs to get this installed, always get an exact quote from somebody else, but that's just back of your mind knowledge of 15 to 1800. But that does not count for if it's on a crawl space, not a slab, a crawl space, you will also need to make sure the crawl space is encapsulated. So that's placing a thick, almost like plastic barrier to block out everything. And to do that, the same person that quoted the 15 to 1800 for this tube and fan said they charge about $2.25 per square foot to encapsulate a crawl space. 
So that can quickly add up. If you have a thousand square foot home, that's $2,250 to encapsulate underneath the crawl space. And then another 15 to $1,800 to install this tube with a fan. So this can better help you out that if you have high rate on levels, you can work out with the seller who covers it. Maybe they split the cost. Maybe the seller pays for it. Um, and then another good question today at today's training was sometimes you see these little meters. Now, these meters are measuring that the fan and ventilation system is actually working. It's not measuring the actual rate on levels, but it's just indicating that there is a vacuum effect happening and the gas is going through the tube. So that's radon. There are certified radon mitigation contractors. There's different websites that if you just start Googling radon, uh, different things will pop up, but there are certified professionals to get it done if you run into this, but that is radon. So it is more serious than just a standard disclosure of, hey, it's just one more thing you could have checked out. I highly recommend getting it done. Again, unfortunately, 21,000 deaths a year happen because of radon. It's the second leading cause of lung cancer right behind uh, smoking. It is a class A carcinogen. So if you have any questions with radon, or if you need a good company to come out and inspect, let me know, comment below. I can gladly connect you with a couple people in your area. Always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.